and subscribe, like it, follow it, do it, post it. Hey. Hey everyone, it's Jarek with House Gunda, and we are here for this week's video. It is the third out of, I think, four or five videos that I'm launching um, to go over the dining room uh, remodel that we've been working on, what you guys have been tuning in for. And I'm really excited to get into this next video. If you guys are into watching YouTube videos, home decor and DIY hacks, then this one is a treat for you. Um, some of my favorite videos that I like to watch on YouTube are a lot of the home decor where they flip Ikea products. Um, I like to go to Ikea to kind of draw inspiration and kind of look at the products to see how some of the high-end furniture stores, some of the trends and ideas that you see in a lot more high-end and expensive interiors trickle down to the mainstream into Ikea. Not to say that Ikea is not high-end, but I mean, come on. Um, but you know, there is an affordable way to achieve some of those high-end looks and what better way to do it um, than doing an IKEA hack. So for today's video, um, I will be going over the shelving behind me um, and how I accomplish uh, the rustic wood, reclaimed wood style to kind of tie in the whole dining room space. So yes, this is an IKEA hack. And yes, you've probably seen this product hacked before, but you haven't seen it by House Gunda. So let me tell you, you're in for a treat. For those of you who do follow me on Instagram, you might have seen me posted a reel about this uh, a few weeks back. A really short, fun little video. Um, as we launch the YouTube channel and also marry the Instagram profile together, I'm curious to hear from you guys what type of content you would like to see, whether you're remodeling, whether you are stuck on a project, whether you have something lying around your house that you would like to repurpose. I'd love to hear, you know, some of your hurdles that you're running into with designing or redecorating your space. Um, and I'll be happy to kind of collect some of my favorite ideas from you guys uh, and try to either attempt it myself or provide any insight um, on some of your problems that you run into. Anyways, back to decorating. IKEA hack, lack shelves. Try to say that five times. All right, now to get started with this project, you will need to pick up a paint to act as the base coat of your wooden shelf. Um, I went with Retique It Light Wood Liquid Wood Paint in the 32 ounce. Honestly, I wish I went with the 16 because I only used half of this quart, but I do plan on using it for other projects. Um, the set does include a stain and I went with the briar spoke just because it does achieve that reclaimed wood and aged wood style without weighing too much on on the cool or warm side. The set does include a two inch brush, so no need to go to the art store to pick up any more supplies. Uh, this is an optional route to pick up a wood graining tool. This is what I use to achieve the wood grains inside the paint to help give it that more realistic look. Don't forget to pick up some buffing cloths. Um, this did come within the kit, but if you have some lying around or need to visit your home improvement store, those are great for applying the wood stain. And of course, pick up some gloves while you're there uh, to protect your hands from both the paint and the wood stain. And of course, the star of this video, you will need to pick up uh, your IKEA lac shelving. This is the 74 and a quarter inch shelving. Uh, this is the largest one that they offer. Unfortunately, my local IKEA has sold out of both the white and the dark brown, but thankfully I did have these in other spaces that I was able to repurpose. Now the Retique It wood paint is good for multi-surfaces. So if you can't find an IKEA, shelving like myself, um, then you could also look at the alternatives. I did find some on Home Depot and Target that are not as long as a 74, but close enough in a 60 that are within the same price range. They do use the same wall mounting system with the dowels um, that I'll link in the description box below. Now for step one, we're gonna apply the base coat. You're gonna apply anywhere from two to three coats. 
Um, I did use the provided 2 inch brush, but I have seen other people use paint rollers or larger brushes depending on the surface area they're trying to cover. Honestly, I was lazy to pick up any other paint brush, so I went with the one provided in the kit. It is recommended to go in long strokes and to continue in one direction. So ensure that you're only moving left and right to create and mimic the actual natural grains that you would see in a real piece of wood. Try to avoid painting up and down um, as you should be creating the strokes within the actual surface. Uh, the sound of paint strokes and jazz playing in the background is quintessential for House Gunda. Um, for those of you interested in just listening to what's playing in my house all the time, I'll drop a link to a playlist I curated for my home. Um, so definitely check that out and let me know what you guys think. But um, back to the DIY. Uh, the first coat is really easy. Again, just apply the paint. If you don't like what you're seeing by the first coat, rest assured you will get it by the second. I was worried that the dark brown shelf might appear darker, but once the project was complete, I couldn't even tell which one originated as brown or white, which shows the versatility of this paint, so definitely don't worry if you are seeing mismatches from the beginning. And of course, allow time in between coats for the paint to fully dry to avoid any kind of errors or issues with the paint. For the second coat, it's a no-brainer. Just follow the same technique um, and just be mindful of your edges. I did find that some of the paint uh, kind of collected towards the bottom or the corners, but sanding can help that towards the end. And as a reminder, this step is optional, um, but to give your shelving a little bit more character, you would want to run a graining tool through it. This was my first time using the graining tool, and I was actually really impressed uh, by the results. So to use the graining tool, you want to use this uh, on your final coat. You want to ensure that the paint is not fully dry so that it could pick up the paint and create some of those natural grooves. Um, when pulling the tool, you want to just place it lightly on the surface and pull in one direction very lightly. As you pull, you want to swivel back and forth to create longer and shorter grains. You could see here what the tool can actually achieve. This was just by pulling the paint uh, with the graining tool versus a shelving without it. So you could tell me which one looks a little bit more realistic. Overall, I did go with two coats and I did allow a final drying before I applied the wood stain. And the final step to this painting project is to stain it using your buffing cloth uh, you want to move in the same left and right directions, the directions of the grains you created so that it can pick up some of the stain and create some of those natural movement that you see in the graining. Um, of course, deposit more stain in areas that you want to appear darker in color and buff out areas that you want lesser color. Now, overall, I am very happy with how this turned out. Um, and now it's time to mount these boys up and style it. We say ganda like wow look how amazing the turnout is on the shelvings 
flipping an inexpensive product to make it look a little bit more expensive. Very excited to style this throughout the seasons and we have one more video to go for the dining room remodel. So stay tuned you guys.